Good morning, Amy. How are you doing? Good morning, sir. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good, very good. Okay. Yes, so last time we did uh, do talk about some functions and all, right? Right. Yeah. Some practice questions and um, how do you place yourself now? Yes, um, so um, I did a couple of questions from my book and all the concepts that we touched upon um, in our lesson. Honestly, I was quite surprised I could answer like literally most of the questions. Um, and this is, I, I, I think we talked about this before, but the similar concepts, we did actually have them at GCSE um, and year 12. And um, I think I went through that all right. Um, but however, there are a couple of concepts that I'm still a bit unsure about. I was mm -hmm. hoping like to strengthen and then resolve them before I hit. Um, year 13 so uh yeah could we like focus a bit more because the questions i found difficult after doing a couple of exam questions was like inverse functions and some composite functions oh that's great so, uh, yeah surely do that because um, i see that 90 percent of the students actually mm -hmm. struggle with uh, how do we relate uh, inverse functions and composite functions while answering normally in gcsc i've seen level a test papers they will have a question in which there'll be about four parts. And oh, right. part of that question will be to find the inverse of a function, domain range, and then composition of the functions and mm. the domain range. So, so these are all interrelated. And therefore, it's a good concept to have a very integrated approach uh, in understanding the concept. And right. that will help you to really answer uh, a question in the examination perfectly, right? So mm -hmm. yes, share with me what all you have, and then we will plan the lesson today. And oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just had a couple of questions um, on those concepts. So I'll be here. Um, yeah, I kind of circled the ones that I didn't get. So okay. we'll start with, sorry, can we start with question nine? Question nine. Can you please read this question? What question? Yes. So the functions P and Q are defined by P, um, X being ln X plus three, mm -hmm. where X belongs to real numbers, X being greater than minus three, and Q. Um, where x is um, like the exponent three to the x, then minus one, where x belongs to real numbers. Great. So part A, find q, p, x, and state its range. Great. Part B, find the value of q, p, seven. And then part C, solve q, p, x equals 124. Perfect. So here are a couple of things which we need to look into it. When they say q, p, x, right? That mm -hmm. is composite function. Do you understand? All right, okay. So when you do two functions together, a third new function is formed. So in composite functions, we need to see the order in which a function has to be uh, you know, combined, then you get a new function. So that is what we need to look into. And another thing which is there is a restricted domain. So when you restrict the domain of a function, then things really change and they become kind of very interesting. So right. we will look into these parts uh, when I review some questions with you. What are other questions? Because I want to have a clear picture of what all you want to need to understand. Mm -hmm. And then accordingly, I'll uh, you know kind of teach you. Yeah, so I think with that question, like you've just circled, it was main, mainly to do with the composite part and then also the exponential thing. So that was a bit iffy. Okay, um, so exponential and logarithmic function, how they are and how do they work? Right. We'll look into yeah. that. That's sure. Um, then it was question 11. Okay. So what, yeah, what do you don't understand in this question? Yes, can you um, read this? Yeah. Yeah, I can. So the function G has domain uh, where X is between minus five and 14, both included, and is linear from minus five, minus eight to a uh, zero 12 and mm -hmm. from zero 12 to 14, five. Mm -hmm. So a sketch of the graph of Y equals G of X is shown on the diagram. Mm -hmm. um, then part A, write down the range of G. Mm -hmm. Part B, find G g of zero, and then um, the function h is defined by h where x is um, 2x minus 5 over 10 minus x, and then part c, find g h of 7. Perfect. I like this type of questions, and they are kind of questions which you'll be, you'll be expecting in your test. Yeah. yeah. So see part a and b, uh, for example, part a and b, you could directly answer uh, from the graph itself, right? So when they say range, right? So range is from minimum to maximum, and that is clearly from minus eight to 12, correct? So yeah. that gives you the range part of it. And now we have a composition of function g of g zero, do you understand? Yeah. So when you say g of, let me rewrite this, g of, let me write off here like this. Sometimes we write like this, g zero. 
As I said, the order is important in composite function. We start from inside out. So remember yeah. this, uh, let me write here, inside out. So inside is G zero, right? That is inside. So what is the value of the function at zero? It is 12. Do you see that 12? Yeah. So we get G of 12. Do you understand? So now we will write this as G of 12 so because G zero, the value of the function at zero is 12. Oh, it's 12. So now you have to go to 12 and say, read from the graph, what is the value of the function? Do you get the idea? Yeah, yeah. So that is the value which will be your answer. Is it okay? So some, yeah. some value k, let, let me write it down. So how will you get the value of k? So basically you need to find the equation of these lines, right? So as you can see, this is a piecewise function, right? See, that's the bit I didn't um, get. I, I found the equations of the lines and then yeah. I just subbed in okay. zero into both so of them. So if you found the equations of the lines, it's much easier. See, we can say g of x, is equal to two pieces where first equation is whatever. What equation did you find? The y-intercept is 12, right? And yeah. the slope is uh, how much up did you go? Eight and 12 is 20, correct? So, 20. so basically, right? So you can write this as, yeah, what is, what is your equation? Tell me. Um, I think I got four X plus 12 and then minus half X plus 12. So four X plus 12 is within the domain from minus five to zero. So this, you will write this as, when X is greater than equal to, that filled in dot circle means it is included. So this is yeah. minus yeah. five and it is less than equal to zero. Do you understand now? Yeah. And what is the other graph equation? When is minus it half X plus 12. So minus half X plus 12. And that is when x is greater than, since we included uh, zero on this side, you need not include on that side. It's one and the same thing. And that oh. goes up to 14, correct? Yeah. So in this equation, which is your second equation, you have to plug in 12. G12 means what? So G12 really means in your equation, minus half x, put x as 12, right? So put, instead of x, put 12. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. and then plus 20. So that gives you 20 minus six, which is? Well, this is, uh, yeah. 14. Uh, no? G oh. of 12. So no, maximum is 12 only, right? So something, oh, this is not 20, 12. I'm so sorry. So sorry, let me, let me erase this part. Your equation was? Minus half x plus, plus 12. 12. I wrote 20. I wrote 20. That's my oh. problem. Okay. Not 20. Not 20, right? Let's rewrite this. Okay. So let me do it here. So g of 12 will really mean minus half x value is 12 plus 12, which is minus 6 plus 12, right? 6. six. So 6 will be your answer for this function, composite function g of g zero you understand yeah yeah right? so so that is that is how you're going to solve it and if the graph is uh, like good enough you could actually read it directly from the graph but i, I purposely purposely they have not given you the value since you have to find the equation of the line mm -hmm. and then calculate just as we did is that okay yeah yeah okay so let's move forward what are the other type of questions Oh, yeah, so that was that. And I think part C was just where it's the composite function again, like you okay, said. Okay, right, function. right. So, so this same. part G is, is the function H is already defined uh, as 2x minus 5 over 10 minus this. And you have to find G of H7. So first thing is find what is H of 7. Do you understand? So H do I just sub that in? Substitute Six. 7 there, right? So 2 times 7. Minus, minus five, 5 over 10 minus 7, right? Use your calculator or without calculator, you can write 14 minus 5. That's three, right? Yeah. And what do you get? 9 over this is 3. So you get 9 three. over 3. three. So that yeah. is h of 7. And now you have to find what is g of 3. Do you see that? So I have to use the 4x. Yeah, that minus, minus half minus half of this value, right? Which is three, right? Plus twelve, and get oh, yeah, yeah. 
You so it's on. just about the domains and like where I am, because I can't use the equation for the other one because it's minus five to zero. Yeah, yeah. Only these values you can use your concept. Is oh, okay. the concept clear to you? How do yeah, we yeah. push this? Well, we'll actually look into this. We'll have a fresh look on the two topics, which is inverse of a function, mm. how to really adjust its domain and range, and the composition of the function. I'll okay. also explain you, I've got the idea from here. I'll also explain you about the exponential and ln natural law, right? They are uh, inverse of one another. How do we work with it? Okay. So I okay. thought, let me go in the reverse order. First, I will explain. Do you have more questions? Or these are. Um, I just had one more, and I, okay, I think okay, you touched upon your... most of yeah, it. Yeah, let's, but let's... it was just the last thing of okay, okay. part 4a. Okay. So can you please read the question? Yes, I can. So. Um, g of x equals 1 over x, where x belongs to real numbers and x is greater than or equal to 3. Mm -hmm. um, but for, I guess there's so many of these equations, but for each one we have to, part i, state the range of g of x. Um, part 2, determine the equation of the inverse function, um, g to the power of minus 1x. Um, part 3, state the domain and range of the inverse. And then part four, sketch the graphs of y equals g of x and the inverse function on the same the set of axes. axes. Perfect. Yeah. So let me summarize what we are going to learn now. So first we'll understand what is a function g of x, correct? This is what we'll understand, right? Yeah. So when we understand, we mean we'll see the domain and range, right? And then also graph. We could have different kinds of functions. G of x could be any function. Then we'll look into what is G inverse of x, correct? And then we will look into F of G of x. That means composition of x, correct? Okay. So, yeah. so we'll look into all these things together. Then it will make sense, right? That composite function itself is a function, right? So you can um, go I from see. here back to this place. Do you understand? And yeah, yeah. this is the same thing. Now, composition could also be of, as we had in our example, g of gx. Composition by itself, as we had an example, you understand? G of g0 with it, correct? So we'll look into all this. So what I will do here is that you have some idea about the function. Yeah. Uh, some idea about the inverse functions, uh, but not much about the composite function. So I think I'll start from the reverse side and my approach in today's lesson will be to make you understand what is a composite function. Then we get one function, right? And then we right. go from yeah. top to bottom, right? Do you, do you get uh, me? Okay. So we'll yeah, have yeah. a very different approach. I hope that works, right? Okay. So let yeah. me share with you a lesson on composite functions. And then from there, uh, we'll begin. Okay. okay, that sounds good. Yeah, and I'm going to keep it very, very simple and very general. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So we'll talk about what is, uh, let me just get the highlighter. We'll talk about the composite function, right? So composite function, as I said, is basically combination of function, you can say, mm -hmm. right? So that is a, a simple term in which we write combination. That is one critical thing, right? When we do the combination of functions, functions means precise, did you understand? Accurate, right. precise. That means we are looking into order of the operation. That order has to be precise, like a supply chain, right? You first yeah. do something, then something else, and then the third thing from what you get. Do you understand? I see, yeah, so, yeah. So it's kind of like this. So first you do something, then from there you do something else, then it becomes a function of a function. You get to right. yeah. and that's the whole concept. And how I like to use it is something like this. We are, we are so tuned in using the word X, Y, G, and F. So yeah. I got some words for you here. So for example, we are all wearing these clothes, right? So you start with the yarn, for example. Do you see that? Yeah. So from the yarn, you first make fabric. Correct. Once right. you have the fabric, then you make the garments. Oh. But the garments have the yarn in it. So garment is a function of yarn. You get the idea. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> you, you see that? So yeah, you, yeah. You cannot change this order. You have to follow this order to get this function right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's no like, other way to get to garments without you know, yeah, going you through can, the function of the function. Yeah, yeah, don't play around with that order. That is very yeah. Be precise. So in my mind, it's like set in stone. <laughs> yeah, yes, set in stone. So uh -huh. if you do that, you'll get something new. I mean, I'm not saying <laughs> uh, vague, but something new. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. variable, right? You may have to call it by a different name. You could do, right? You could put yarns on your garment and get a new design. You could do that. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> you should follow this order to get that. If you want to get just garments. <laughs> yeah, got it. Now, the idea here is, let's uh, elaborate on this, right? When I say yarn, and we are starting with yarn, there could be like thousands of varieties of yarns available to us. We call that as a domain of our function, right? Everything which is available as a yarn to begin with, correct? Right? Let's say we really want to make a garment. Let's say we want to make a shirt. Yeah. We have huge variety of yarns, uh, let's say, right? And we decide that we just want white, top quality shirts, which could be used in offices, let's say, right? So yeah. that is, and our design is less black and white, for example. We're just promoting that, for example. So in that case, we will be more interested in all the yarns which are in black and white and which could be related with that so that we get what our theme is. You get mm -hmm. So that means from this yarn, we have many fabrics made. So we, we could have thousands of fabrics, but from those fabrics, we are only selecting the ones which meet our requirement. Right. Yeah. So we are calling that sub range. So from this yarn, we are making fabric and amongst those fabrics, we are interested in those uh, which give our product, our function, right? So that means a limited range of that yarn. You get the idea? So that yeah. highlighted in orange is the range of the yarn, which now becomes the domain for our garment. Oh, I see. So this yeah, becomes yeah. the domain for our garment because we are only using those black and white yarns. Yeah, so yeah. Made from black and white source, right? So the black and white fabric is now being utilized to make our garment. Right, right. Yeah. Other manufacturers are using a whole lot of other designs. Well, that is also there in the domain of uh, uh, garment manufacturing companies. But for us, the domain is the one which we have highlighted. A limited part of it. Always it is. Mm -hmm. right? You cannot use the whole world, right? So, yeah. that, that, so that becomes the domain for the garments, right? right. And using this particular group of fabric, you make a product, which is your garment. And this is the function of function. You get the idea. So mm -hmm. these garments are related with the yarn, of course, but with a specific requirement and which is our black and white shades, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we may decide tomorrow to make some colored and spring and fall uh, collection. And we might use the other part of the domain and create new function. Yeah. You get the idea. So, yeah. so you have that flexibility. So that is how, because the manufacturing process is set to make garments. Now the inputs could be black and white or color. Right, right. Now when we are focusing on a one, one particular function, which is the black and white collection, we will use some restricted things, correct? Yeah. yeah. Function. You get the uh, idea. Okay, yeah. So those restrictions are important, which are the domain and range. That is what I wanted to tell you. So when they uh, write down that your function is a linear function to begin with, but yeah. then they say greater than minus five, but less than plus five. So within that particular domain. And uh, now they are having, on that top of it, we have a quarterly function. How will it look like? Right. Yeah. Right. And then find the domain range, maximum, minimum, all those things of the combination of these two. So that is the real question which you have been asking me. You get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So this concept is what be becomes the range of one thing is becoming a part of domain for the other thing. You know, that is how this mm -hmm. system is flowing. Right. So it's very important to understand that composition is a connection where apply an operation to the result of another, right? So first thing, what was the result of the first operation? That now becomes the domain and leads into the next result. That is oh. the of the next function. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. When we write it, we write like this. This is performed first, right? Making the yarn. That is my fabric is made from yarn. So I use this F for fabric. Y for yarn. So fabric is a function of yarn. You understand now? Yeah. So fabric is a function of yarn from which I'm making garments. So G of um, F of Y. You get the idea? G yeah. of F of Y making garments from the fabric which was created from the yarn. Yarn. Oh, I see. Inside yeah. out is the real 
way of working on. You will start with the yarn only, right? Right. Yeah. There's no other way to start. Yeah. So inside out. So let me just write this inside out. What is the order? The order is inside out. Is this clear in simple language? Yeah, really clear. And I've used the function notation. I use kind of uh, things which are relate to them, right? Yeah, yeah, fabric and garment. So this will help you to remember all this. Perfect. And this diagram, keep it in your mind so that you okay. get an idea that we are talking about domains, subdomains, range, sub, a part of a subset of it, correct? Not the whole thing. Just Every a subset, thing. yeah. So to give you an example, very simple example uh, in numbers, because we understand numbers better, right? So let me define a function f of x, which is uh, given to you as 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, 5, 3, 7, 4, 9, 5, 11. So when I write within those curly brackets, it means set off. And mm -hmm. those coordinate point, this set has all those x and y values, right? So we are relating the input and output values, correct? Of the function f of x, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Similarly, we have another function here, which is g of x, which is 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 16, and 5, 25, right? Though that is my second function. Right. I am interested in g of f of x. So what should I do first? First, I have to see the f of x. That means from 0, I am getting 1, correct? Output is 1. So when I do the first f of x means input comes from here, right? I am starting from here, correct? Yeah. So if I want to write, I, I will start like this. I will say g of f of first value 0, right? Do you see that? Yeah. So I get this value as g of f of 0 is 1. Do you see this output is 1? Yeah. And then I come to the function g of x and see what is the value. When the independent input is 1, what is the output? Well, output is also 1. 1, yeah. So I get that as an output. And therefore, do you see this function now? g of f of x, first, my point will be for zero input, when I put a zero input here, what I get output as one. Do you see that? Mm. Now, if I input one there, that means g of, let me write like this, f of one, right? So that means g of, what is f of one? f of one is three, right? Three. Yeah. And now in the second one, for three, I get nine as an output. Do you see that? So oh. for three, I get nine as my output. Is that clear to you? Yeah, got it. Yeah. Now I substitute two in it. And then if I say G of F of two, right? So F of two, F is, of two five. is five. So G of five, G right? Five is 25. Oh. You, you get it, right? So yeah, five. So it's two twenty-five. Do you see that two and twenty-five? Yeah. Now if I put three here, right? So G of F of three, right? So what is F of three equals to? Seven. Seven. Do I have g of seven there? No. Can you figure it out? Does not exist. No. Oh. So that is what I'm telling you. We do have a domain, and the domain is what? Domain is this zero, zero two, two. Five. Range is oh. zero nine five, and that is subset, right? Zero. That. Uh, sorry, zero. I wrote three. Zero one and two. Sorry, 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 sorry. Input was 0, 1, and 2, right? Mm -hmm. For input 0, 1, and 2, so that means 0, 0, let me highlight these, right? For input 0, 1, and 2, I do get the outputs, and the outputs were? Outputs were for 1, 1, 1, 9, and 25. 1, 9, and 25. You get the idea? Yeah, yeah. So now the composite function g of f of x has got only three elements in it. Do you yeah. So the yes, domain, domain of G of f of x is 0, 1, 9, uh, sorry, 0, 1, 2, right? That becomes the domain. This is domain of? Um, G of f of x. G of f. We can write no. it here, right? And oh. that is the range of G of f. Do you see that? Yeah. So okay. if you write it, do you have to write 0, 1, and 2, or can you just yes. do 0 to 2? 0, 1, 2. So oh. we'll write this in curly brackets. 0, 1, 2, right? I mean, you get the idea, right? Yeah, yeah. One, two. 0, 1, 2. And range as? 1, 9, 25. 1, 9, 25. So messy. Okay. But I hope you understand. You get yeah, the yeah. gist of it. It's correct? clear. Yeah. 
Now, second important thing is, let us reverse the order, right? Let's say f of g of x. In numbers, we could do it, right? In manufacturing, real yeah. life situation, you cannot have a child first and then the mother, right? I mean, you can afford the whole <laughs> yeah. process. But with numbers, you can do anything, right? So, right, right. So let's start with f of g of x, right? <laughs> so let's look into this. If I reverse the operation, that is say f of g of x, that really means what? We'll begin with g of x. Let me erase all this, right? This part. And then we'll go for f of g of x, right? So let me erase this. And let's see what do we get. Let's work it out. Let me change the ink also. Okay, so when I say f of g of, so in g we have one here, right? G of yeah. one. What is g of one? G of one is one, right? So that is one. f of one. And with f of one, we get three as an output. Is that clear? Three. Yeah. Now, what is f of g of two? Four. G of two is four, right? So with four, what do we get? Nine. Right. F of g of three is what? F of nine. G of, f of three. nine. Nine and with nine, what we have? Nothing. Nothing does not exist. So we have only the two elements as shown here, right? This is very different from the previous uh, composite yeah. function. However, you can call a composite function in the reverse order also. Oh, okay. So they are different. They are different functions. You get it? Yeah. Idea? So and now the is domain different. and range have changed again because everything. everything yeah. Is, you get the idea, right? Yeah. This is the basic concept of composite function. If, if it is absolutely clear, we can deal with any function whatsoever. Right, yeah. Any, right? I don't think you can do it with coordinate points. It's weird, but it works really well, so yeah. It actually, see, the graph also is a coordinate set of coordinate points. Right? You have to mm -hmm. just read the value and do it. Now let's do with equations and functions also. Yes, it, okay. is, it is oversimplified just to make you understand the concept. How no, but it's really clear. Yeah, I like it. This could be a test question. This is a very oh. important test question. I've seen it so many times in exams, okay? They will have values like this and students really get, uh, you know, uh, mixed Just up. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now let us look into example, which I have. So what I've done is I've taken two simple uh, functions. One of them is linear, the other one is square root. Okay. Now yeah. the idea of linear and square root is, why did I take it? Because if you see, the linear function has no restriction on domain and range, right? So in this yeah. case, 3x minus 12 is something like this, right? So let's say a function 3x minus 12. And then we have a square root function. And so a square root function is something like this. Is that clear to you? So that becomes the square root function. Uh, let me write square root x. Yeah. And the other function which we have is 3x minus 12. Now, when we do functions, composition of functions, remember one thing. We could only perform on the common domain. You understand? Oh. This, this is kind of important to understand. But I mean, uh, the range and domains uh, that subset should be that that subset should be. That is why you know in the previous case, when I say does not exist, it means what? Right? We came to a value seven, right? Which was the output of the first function, yeah. but it was not in the domain of the second function, so we could not do it. Correct? Oh, I see. Okay. So, it, like, so with the second one, when you graphed it, you can't use the negative side because the root yeah, is well, only if on the, the positive. result is negative, then you cannot use it, correct? Yeah. So you, that you should keep in mind. That oh. is why we had does not exist in the previous case. Yeah, yeah. We can correlate, right? Uh, now, with functions, we can do something more. Is That is, we can come out with an algebraic formula for the composite function. It makes things okay. much more simpler, right? And of course, after getting the formula, we have to see what is our restriction, right? Restriction is dependent on the inside function, the domain. Yeah, yeah. And then its output becomes the input for the other. Keep these things in mind while we are looking into this example. So we'll do two types of functions here, f of x, g of x. So we'll combine it in one order, f of g of x, correct? So that is what we will do. So when I say f of g of x, that really means that first I have to start with g of x. So mm -hmm. what is g of x? g of x is square root of x. So we'll say f of square root x. That means now the input is square root x. Right? x. Yeah. So I will replace, instead of x, I'll replace the function with 3 square root x minus 12. So f of g of x is this function. Do you get the idea now? Yeah. So we have a new function. Now this composite function has got no restrictions. Earlier, this function f had no restriction, correct? 
Because yeah, it had no restriction. Yeah. But, but square root function had restriction. Therefore, the composition will have restriction for sure. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. No. So three square root x means this is only possible when x is greater than or equal to zero. And the range also now, because there's minus 12, right? And the graph will be only going above minus 12. So the range yeah. is also restricted to minus 12, right? And above. You get the idea. Yeah, yeah. So in this particular case, when we combine all this, we get a function which is 3 square root x minus 12. That means we move it 12 units to the right somewhere and then we stretch it kind of like this, right? Let's say that yeah. becomes a function. And of course, we have, move it down. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, minus, yeah, move it down 12 units. Yes, yes. Just create. I mean, okay. <laughs> Minus two. Yeah. So wait, this is wrong. Wait, let me just redo it, right? I, I will put it on the wrong place. Uh, wait. Let's do like this. So so basically, we have three times square root x minus twelve. Means if x is zero, it is minus twelve, right? So uh, that happens to be this particular point. And then I'm not worrying much about the values, but I'm saying let us say this is my graph. Is it okay? Oh, okay. Because this is vertically stretched by a factor of three and it has moved 12 units down. And 12 was also my y-intercept earlier, right? So do you see this minus 12? Yeah. And that is how my function has become. And you can clearly see the domain range of the function now. Do you get the idea? Yeah, yeah. Correct. Now let's look into the reverse process, right? Reverse process means uh, we have interchanged the position and we'll work with the function g of f of x. So now g is outside. Inside function is f of x, so, right. which is 3x minus 12. So within the square root, I will now write 3x minus 12, correct? Now what is the domain? We could factor out 3. And what do we see? This is positive only when x is greater than or equal to 4, right? So now what you get is something very different. So when you do this composition, in that case, the graph is horizontally compressed by a factor of 3 and has moved four units to the right, correct? Yeah. So the function is now like this. You get the idea? But how did you know um, four was included? Is it just because when you put four in, you get yeah. zero? So well, three times x minus four should be greater than or equal to zero, correct? Yeah. For any square root function, you cannot have negative value, non-negative. So we, when you divide by three, you get x minus four greater than or equal to zero, and x is greater oh. than or equal to four, right? So Got this it. you could do to find the domain for any square root function. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. As far as the y value is concerned, uh, there is no plus or minus, right? That plus or minus will give you the vertical shift up and down. Since it yeah. is not there, so it is still on the x-axis from where it starts, as shown here. Is this clear? Yeah. And now, you see the two functions are very different and their domain range is also very different. Do you see, compare the green and the orange graph, right? So, do you see the composition? Yeah, yeah. So, that is what it is. So, when you reverse the order, you get a new function. I'm not saying it's wrong or right. right? I'm it's not just new. Yeah. It's a different function, right? But it's a right. composition of the function, right? That is what, you got the idea of how domain and range really changes when we even change the order, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me take you to the next example because I found that your questions were related to exponential function and natural law. Now, these are inverse of one another. That means what you really need to know is that if I do uh, e to the power of ln x, for example, it is equals to x. Do you understand? And if I do ln e, right, ln e, it is also inverse of one another. Do you understand? Yeah. E to the power of x, right? So this is also x. Do you see that? They they are inverse of one another. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. They're inverse of one another, right? That is what the inverse function is. Yeah. Uh, so now, or, or you can say L and E is equal to one. You can say that also, right? So oh. when you multiply these two functions, then you get one. So, so of course, uh, you know, th that is how L N and E are related to one another. So when we get into anything which relates, uh, we should know these things for sure. Is that clear? Right. Yeah. Very important key points to remember. Okay, now let's look into the example here. I've taken a simpler example than what you showed me. 
And I hope with this example, you can do your question. That's the whole idea, right? Okay. In your yeah. case, it is translated three units to the right or something like that, right? Or, you know, there was some transformation. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I've done here is taken two functions. F of X is exponential function and G of X is logarithmic function. Now, here is the graph for exponential function. Do you see this graph of exponential function? Yeah. Now, as you can see from the graph, there is no restriction on the domain. However, the range is greater than zero. Is zero. It? Right. Yeah. Now, let's look into the logarithmic function, which is inverse of exponential function. And you can clearly see that in this case, the domain and range has flipped, right? There is right. a restriction on the domain that it is greater than zero and range, no restriction. You can no see restriction. How they flip so because X and Y values swap. So this is the concept um, of inverse function. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so that is the first thing to see. And now we will look into the, their composition. So we'll first look into what is F of G of X. You will start from inside, right? G of X. So we can write this as f of what is g of x ln x correct so f yeah. of ln x do you see that so f of ln x now yeah. function is e to the power of x so you replace x with ln x right ln. so yeah. you get e to the power of ln x do you see that and what is e to the power of ln x it is x, x. times e to the power of ln which is x is that clear to you? yeah yeah so you get a linear function x now, at this stage, many students will do a mistake because when they look at y equals to x, that means this is a straight line. It has no restrictions on domain and range, correct? Yeah. That's not the case because this straight line was actually defined on e to the power of ln x. ln x cannot be negative, right? It is greater than zero. You get the idea. So, oh. and this is a very critical stage. So, this is like put a star there, right? Put a star. Now here, I know they are inverse of one another, but we are talking about ln x means, ln x means x is greater than zero, correct? Yeah. So that means it is inherited in x that this is greater than zero. Is, do you understand this point? So I, how do you know I, which domains pass down? Like, so e to the x on its own has a restriction and ln x has a restriction. In, in, first, we have to look into inside function. Yeah. If you cannot put that input right in the very beginning, there is no question of getting anything else, right? Okay, okay. So ln x has this restriction that, do you see this ln x? Yeah. And it has a restriction of x being greater than so zero. E, e is a number. E is a number. E to the yeah. power of ln x. X is a variable. It's an exponential function. Now, oh. ln x is not valid if x is not greater than zero. Is that clear to you? So the restriction okay. is that x is greater than zero. So what? how will you graph this particular function? You will graph with a straight line with a hole at the origin. Do you see that hole there? I've drawn like this. Do you understand? I'm just yeah. This point. You get the oh, idea? Because zero is not included. Yeah. Zero is not included. So, and did you draw it like that because with the um, e to the x, the y is greater than zero? Yes, y is greater than zero, right? Because e is always, you know, e is always greater. You know this function, e to the power of x? Yeah, yeah. Y is greater. So we know we'll get a positive okay. answer for sure, right. right? Okay. So I don't have to think on that part that I'm going to get positive answer, right? e to the power of something, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> okay. So it's always okay. a positive value, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm getting a positive value. All right. So therefore, right. y is greater than zero. So do you understand how I got domain and range? Yeah. Very yeah. tricky. You have to keep these two graphs in your mind while you're doing composition function. After all, what did you add? For example, coming back to our example on yarns and the garments. If I only want black and white garments, I can yeah. pick up a red yarn. Yeah, because you just want black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, what will I do? Get red. Process, right? <laughs> Very right, nice. yeah. So uh, we have to be very clear about what we are doing. So we are always working with the subdomain and the sub range. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Subset of these things to get our results. So our results will be kind of subsets of these things, right? That is the basic. But mm. uh, I am now showing you the other half of it. That is so beautiful. That is to say, sometimes what happens is, uh, because in this, there is a tricky part that e to the power of x has no restriction, right? x belongs to real numbers. Do you see that? 
Yeah. So when Only that becomes an insight, when that becomes an insight function, things change. Yeah, yeah. Look here. We have reversed the function now, and we are saying what is g of f of x? And now f of x is e to the power of x. That means g of e to the power of x. Do you see that part? Yes. Yeah. Function, right? e to the power of x has no restriction on domain. We could put any value there. And so what we get? We get always a positive value, right? This value will always be positive, right? Always positive. Yeah. Now g is ln x. So I wrote ln e to the power of x. Now since e to the power of x, e to the power of x is always greater than zero. Ln x is valid for everything now because ln x needs input, which is positive. Yeah. So the whole range, whole range of e works as a domain for ln. So domain can take care of anything. I see. Yeah, There's yeah. No restriction on this x. Ln e to the power of x. X can be anything. Yeah. Because if I put that x value here. It is going to give me a positive result, even if right. I have negative ten. E to the power of that value will be a positive result, right? You understand? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But if I write e to the power of minus ten, it will be what? It will be e one over e to the power of ten. I know that is greater than zero. That yeah. Is Yeah, so it can take any value basically. So, so ln of e to the power of minus ten is valid. Do you see that? Yeah. So this line which I get is a straight line without restriction. So this line is actually the whole line. Yeah. So you so don't now, need to draw any hole or anything. Yeah. Now I have no restriction on domain range. Oh. Uh, Mainly because the in, inside function had no restriction. Yeah, we are looking into restrictions based on inside inside function. function. If oh. inside function has a restriction, for sure there is a restriction. You get the idea. As so it doesn't matter about the other function whether yeah. it has it. It's only about the inside. It will matter. It will matter oh. something, but mainly inside. First inside okay. restriction, then then from the other side, right? Got but it. Inside Got function it. is important. Do you see the importance? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. The same line, the same value of x. However. The domain range is different. Yeah. So if that changes, that means the graphing of it also changes because yes. So now you can draw. That function line. now is basically a straight line, which will all be all over. All over. Do you get the idea? Yeah. So that is why in your exams, the question is always based on exponential logarithmic functions because when mm. you look at these, you get totally different image. Yeah. And people forget about. This critical part of not being included, zero mm. not being included, and that is a huge mistake, which will cost marks. Is that clear to you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now you attempt your question, you will understand like why they are asking in different ways. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Now the second type of question which I find uh, many times uh, students are struggling with is when I include the quadratic function within the square root. You know, oh. now that is very important because when I say square root of x, right? Then I say that x is greater than equal to zero. Is that clear to you? Yeah. But if I write square root of x, now x belongs to real numbers. Do you see how the domain changes totally? Hmm. Yeah. Correct. So, so any value of x, yeah. Any value of x. No, right. That makes huge difference, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Look at this particular question. Can you please read the question here? What is the function given to you? Um, so four minus x squared square root, and g of x equals x squared. Correct. So I've used a combination of that square root and square because right. if I if I do square root and square, I get x. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So these combinations really result into many many things, and you know there's there's a very critical question which I always ask for. What is square root of x square? Absolute value of x. Absolute value of x. Do you see yeah. x belongs to all real numbers? Oh. It is not x. It is absolute value of x. It is always positive. You get the yeah. idea. Yeah. Always positive. Remember this. Always positive. Now let's look into this question, right? So we'll only look into one function, which is f of g of x, right? Now 
we will find domain range of f of g of x inside function is g of x which is x square which has got no restriction at all see that yeah. so i am yeah. starting with a function which has no restriction last time when i started i got the result without any restriction but this time it is different story do you see that oh, that's why i have taken okay. this example so so f of x square kare now function is square root of 4 minus x square so in that i will put the function now so f of x square really means that i will replace that x with x square right square. so when i do that i get f my 4 minus x square square you see that function yeah yeah perfect now 4 is 2 square and therefore i could factor this as sum and difference of square their product right so okay. i just factored this as 2 minus x square times 2 plus x square correct yeah now this part 2 plus x square is always greater than 0 correct yeah however this part has a restriction it could be negative yeah within the square root i cannot have negative that is to say that 2 minus x square should always be greater than or equal to 0 is zero. it zero yeah that means 2 is always greater than equal to x square, x square. if i do square root what do i get just because uh, you said you can't have negative um, so i get square root of 2 is always greater than or equal to what is this absolute value of x, value of x. <laughs> you see that uh, yeah yeah what, is, what does it mean absolute value of x which i have written here everything's always positive yeah that absolute value of x means that x is actually less than or equal to square root 2 but is greater than or equal to minus square root 2 do you understand mm -hmm. So now my domain is this. You get the idea. Uh, I I have a restricted domain because the outside function imposed that domain. That you now let's go back to this our function. This domain. Do you understand? We are not taking the whole thing. We are only taking the center part. Do you see that center part? Yeah. That now becomes the domain. Do you understand now? That is why the domain is restricted, as you can see here. Oh, so yeah. just because the inside function had no restriction, it doesn't mean you just automatically say that because the outside one did, and it had an impact. We could use any colored yarn, but if our project is black and white, I have a restriction yeah. in the in yeah, the, right. Okay. I have to choose black and white. Do you get the right. idea? That yeah. is what it is. So I am restricted within the domain, which is within square root of plus and minus square minus root. Minus square right? root. You understand? Yeah. And I just sketched the graph for you know. For you to see how the yeah. domain has changed, and now also how the range has changed. Because when I have a restriction between minus two and plus two, then what is there is some maximum value also involved in it. Because the graph goes from one point comes back to zero, right? right? So there is a turning point, right? And that turning point is our maximum. Do you see that? Yeah. So I have a restriction on range also, as you can see. Well, this time I wrote it wrong. I'm sorry. The range is between zero to two, right? Yeah. So let me write down again here. So y is between zero to two. Is it clear to you? Yeah. So and this graph very clearly shows you. So you could have restriction on both domain and range also, even if the inside function has no restriction. Right. You get the idea. It had no restriction at least on domain, right? So don't generalize like that. It's not good to generalize. But few things you could say. Yeah. <laughs> if the inside function now we also saw that inside function has no restriction and outside had a restriction and this is the second time that we have seen that correct yeah okay now uh, most of the time uh, what we do is we take a combination of linear and quadratic function this is easy test question i should say easy test let me classify some test okay. questions are easy some are difficult right right so, so uh, it looks very complicated though right it looks very yeah, complicated yes. but in a for a test this is a simpler question okay now let's can it, the function f of x is 3x minus 2 g of x is 6x minus x square and both of the functions have no restrictions on their domain you can see one is yeah. linear one is quadratic correct both have no restrictions on the domain x belongs to real numbers correct yeah now but you notice one thing that this function does have a restriction on range right right why why is not why is not belonging to all the real numbers do you understand 
Because mm-hmm. negative. It's a parabola, right? Right. So yeah. Negative parabola, it will be like this. So that means the composite function could have a restriction. Do you understand? So when mm. you look into this question, you should think there could be a restriction because there is a restriction on the range of the other other function. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Let's look into the function which we are interested in, g of f of x. So I put f of x inside. So f of x is 3x minus 2, and we'll do g of that. That means we'll plug this value of x with 3x minus 2. Okay? Yeah. As soon as I plug, you get this particular equation. And when I expand this, I get a quadratic equation. You can do this calculation later, but we get a quadratic equation, some quadratic yeah. So we got some quadratic equation. And from this, since we know that there is a restriction, we have to work it out and find the maximum point. You get the idea? Yeah. Right. So you can do completing the squares. And once you do the completing the squares, follow this method of completing the squares, adding and subtracting half of the B value, right? And the square, correct? Yeah. And then once you complete your squares, you know you got a parabola, which has a maximum value of nine here, right? So at five over three, we get a maximum value of nine. And therefore, you could write that the range of this particular oh. function is less than or equal to nine. Yeah, yeah. Makes so sense. Even this simple question is very tricky because sometimes, uh, you know, it is difficult to find this value. You know, because it involves that completing the squares, which yeah. you're familiar with. Uh, but... And when it comes with fractions, it makes it difficult. So the difficult part here is fractions. Do you see that? Or should I use the word rational numbers? Mm. Is that clear to you? The yeah. yeah. So B, these, these are real questions which come in the test paper and I've seen them so many times, right? But now let me really share with you exact question from the test paper, which is similar to what we just discussed, uh, which is, f of x equals to 4x minus 2x squared, gx is 5x plus 3, find the range of f. You see the why are they asking for range of x? Because we have a parabola involved in this composite function. Do you see that? Yeah. And, that parabola is is there and composition is there. There is a restriction on range. And then part b is find the value of the constant k for which the equation g of f of x is a constant has equal roots. Very tricky I think is a very difficult statement to understand. Can you please read this statement and tell me what do you make sense out of it? Yeah. Yeah. So find the value of the constant k for which the equation g of f of x equals k has equal roots. Yeah. Is this is the part of the question which actually came in. Can you please read this? Um, the Cambridge International AS and A level maths or mathematics. Um, 9709 paper 12 question 3 june 2010 yes so i picked this question from there a part of it there are four many different parts of it right, right? but yeah. since we are looking into the composition of the functions and seeing how these topics are related and how do you really see them in your test paper that's the whole idea of sharing this question with you right yeah, and, yeah. Uh, now tell me how will you approach and solve this question um so well, so yeah, so first, like you said, the composite part. So I think I'll leave K for the minute, but let's yes. just work on um, G of F of X. So Very good. Very good. take F of X, um, which is 4X minus 2X squared, yeah. and so that in as X. Yeah, so G of F of X, you said correctly. Don't think about the second part first. <laughs> first, yeah. find the basic function. Otherwise, you'll not be able to even yeah. start this question. Okay. It's a little bit com- complicated. Very complicated. So right. start with this. You'll get to somewhere, right? So f of x, you know, is 4x minus 2x squared. Put it inside, inside out. Then, yeah. g of, then put this value back into x in the g of x. And as we put it there, we get a quadratic equation, just as we got in the last example. Correct? Right. And then, then we come to the second statement. So... Then we come to the second statement, which is when this is equal to k. Do you see it? So I introduce k now. So when I make it equal to k, I bring everything back to one side. So we again have a constant now, which is k minus 3. Right, right. And uh, and then we are saying that it has equal roots. What does equal roots mean? Equal roots means b squared minus 4ac is 0. Do you see it? So yeah. from here, I've taken b square minus 4 is equal to 0, and then found the value of k and got my answer. Do you um, see how well it is connected? 
Right, right. That I will say yeah. is a thinking question. So it's it's understanding that equal roots means b squared minus four ac equals oh, zero. Yeah, and yeah, then, it's without that, then you can't move forward. Second, we have a statement which can really put you off track. You may get yeah, buzzard. Yeah. What is this going to happen, right? So do as much as you can. Probably you'll get the right part. Right. The, <laughs> so yeah. So start uh, with the simple and then see where it takes you, and then go from there. This is kind of important to understand. That's why I shared with you this particular question. And believe me or not, uh, this type of questions are always seen in every test paper. Mm -hmm. They are right. connecting many different concepts uh, which they have taught over a period of time. Year 12, 13, all combined. You get the idea? You yeah. learned about this constant roots much, much earlier, right? Well, we'll have to use them again, right? Do you see that? Sir? Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, I understood that. Um, just um, on part A, when you wrote find the range of f. Yes. Does that is that just because that's the only one with the restriction? Because the linear yes. one. Now we have not yet done. So we we did answer the part B, and once you had this uh, quadratic function, we have to do completing the square. So uh, so now first thing is get the value of k. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, find the value. Uh, find, though this range is only for part f, range of yeah. f, right? So I didn't do it because that was very simple. f of x is, you know, f of x is given to us as 4x minus 2x squared, correct? Yeah. So you can find the range of this, right? So what is the maximum value? You can think about just factor out 2x, for example, minus 2x, right? When you factor out minus 2 Minus 2. So in that case, I get x here, right? And minus two here, right? Do you see that? So we have a parabola, correct? And this parabola has zeros at zero, right? And the other zero is at two. Right? Two. So the center value is one. So plug in one here. So f of one is what? F of one, is, you can use the first equation. Four, Four minus, minus two, two. two, right? And therefore you get the range of it. And that is y value is less than or equal to since it is opening downwards, why equals to two? Do we have to put zero as well? Less than equal to two means everything. Oh, below. everything below. Yeah, right. yeah. This this point is actually at one two. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So yeah. that was the first part. So I didn't really get into the first part. That's a basic question. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when you start with, you'll get parts A, B, C, D, and that will be your part D actually. <laughs> Kind of. in Because it's, yeah, the hardest part. The hardest part. So in between, yeah. they'll be finding this, finding that, and so many other things, right? So yeah. answer them one by one. And when you get to this, this is your real question, which will be uh, most weighted question. <laughs> you get the right. idea. Yeah. So I just jumped into this. Okay? So yeah. that's the whole idea. Okay. So I think you got the idea, correct? Yeah, yeah. It's clear now. Yeah. Let's look into the inverse function. I do have one simple example. Square root is a very important function which uh, we work with. Reciprocal is also which you took up in your yeah, whatever. So when I was going through your list, there was some square root function also. So we'll take one example to understand how do we work with square root. And then we can actually, we, we did combine square root with our composite functions. You must have seen yeah. it, right? Yeah. But now let me, because our approach was to go from bottom to top. We oh, actually talked broadly yeah. about composite functions functions and you know everything but now let's uh, have a deeper look into inverse of a function okay yeah okay. so so let's consider the function f of x equals to square root of x plus one so basically it means what square root function is shifted one unit left correct yeah so the graph in red is that particular function and let me write this as square root of x plus one right now what is the domain range of this function as you can see, the domain X is, is greater than or equal to minus, minus one. Yes. And the range is? Y is greater than zero. Yes. Now, the question zero. Is, yeah. now your question will have find the inverse function. So part B is find inverse and part C is domain and range of? The inverse. Of the inverse, right? I think. What I will suggest, as soon as you write this, right? Write down the answer for part C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's literally right there. Oh, okay. X belongs to real numbers and write this value, right? Where X is greater than equal to zero. zero. And Y belongs to real numbers, right? 
and where y is uh, greater than or equal to minus one. Do you see that? Yeah. So my question before before we started was just that in terms of when you write the inverse for the um, let's say they weren't both greater than equal to. Just say the first x was greater than equal to minus one. Would when you switch them, do you keep that greater than equal to with x, or do you put it to the y? Because you know when you swap, you have to write exactly the same thing. Only change x with y and y with x. Oh. So, okay. So what I did was let me just uh, show it. This is x y right? Yeah, yeah. I wrote it like this. This is oh, X. Okay. I wrote it here. Exactly same thing. Don't think. Okay. Because, yeah, because I had questions where they weren't both greater than equal to. Only one was, and then the other was just greater it than. Doesn't, so. If it is less than, copy less than. <laughs> okay. Got it. Yeah, I could have minus outside, right? right I could right. have had a function like minus square root of X plus one, correct? In that case, the function would have been like this, correct? So one yeah. is greater than, the other one is less than. Yeah. It will okay. work. It will work. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. So first thing, if you see function, inverse function, domain range, domain range. So do function domain range and straight away go to inverse function domain range. Okay. Don't sit down and calculate inverse function. Yeah, first write the domain range. Step for the number inverse. one, step number two. <laughs> okay. Even this though the question gives it the other way around, do it this way first. This is step number three. Okay. So now you swap x and y. Do you see that? Now I'm doing swap and solve for y. So x has been outside. You do square root, root, right? And then you find the inverse. Is that clear to you? Yeah. But remember one thing. As soon as you find the inverse, write down the, the restriction. Do you see that restriction? Yeah. If you do not write the restriction, your inverse is wrong because the parabola actually is this also. Yeah. We are only using the right half. Right. That's really yeah. important. Okay. Very important. And since you know, because you have already done this part, correct? Put it there, straight. Hmm. So that is why step two should be to find domain and range. Step three, oh. find the equation, put the restriction. Point four, place restriction. All right. Because yeah, it's so easy to forget. And when you do, it's all wrong. And after all that work, really sad if you're going to lose all the points you get the idea yeah, yeah. it's easier also you don't have to think twice yeah, yeah if something has gone wrong you will know something is not matching you'll recheck yeah makes sense and you see this is your function only right half of the parabola so when i'm using plus right half if this was minus square root of x plus one then you only it would have been the left half do you understand yeah yeah <laughs> So but, can you write the dotted version or is it best to just write the positive so it's clear? Forget about dotted. Why do okay. waste? Only okay. show the right. Because your teachers may interpret it wrong way, correct? Right. You never know. Yeah. The scanner may, may mismatch the solution. Say That's something true. Extra. <laughs> you don't know how they maybe the dotted it. could be the actual solution. Yeah. It's yeah, not clear. Okay. okay. So is this part absolutely clear, right? So yeah, it is. I hope I have answered most of your uh, questions today. You definitely did. Yeah, I think you touched upon everything and more. <laughs> You're right. So, yeah. and I've left you with your questions because now I think you, you can really do them no, yourself, sorry. right? Uh, yeah. You, uh, so, can you please summarize today's uh, learnings? Uh, yeah. So we started off by um, just kind of going through my questions and uh, you like kind of touched upon um, the things that I need to go through and we kind of worked like backwards and then worked back forward, which I liked because um, the composite function was the many of the questions that were in my book. And I guess it's just understanding how we're doing like the whole yarn um, model that you had is just function of a function and it's kind of putting that result into the next function, then that result into another one. So don't always like go back. So you always go inside out. Um, and then in terms of um, sketching those graphs, um, domains are really important because the, if you just sketch the graph and you did all that working, if you didn't write down any restrictions, the whole thing is pointless because the, the answer is wrong. Because yes. like we saw with the um, positive and things, parabola. yeah, the parabola, it wouldn't make sense otherwise if you don't have those restrictions in place. Um, so that's why you have to follow your method of doing first finding out. So let's say you have a function f of x, find the domain and range for that, 
then yeah. immediately find the inverse of that, the domain and range, but write it down and then find the actual inverse function. Okay. Okay. So work like that. And then um, in terms of sketching, it's just understanding that even before you attempt the question, if you've got f of x, which is given, and then g of x, look at your different um, functions and see, do they have restrictions already or um, do they all belong to real numbers? And just having that in mind, knowing that when you do your composite function, maybe it, it could have one of those restrictions just okay. because one of the functions did because it's almost like lead on. So you would have a restriction. We also so, yeah. saw that both the functions, you know, there were restriction in the function, but the composite function had no restriction at right. all. That yeah. ln yeah. e to the power of x is a beautiful example because e to the power of x always gives you positive values. Positive. And ln, yeah. natural log of a positive value is valid. And therefore right. we have no restriction on the domain, right? Yeah. The inside yeah. function in this place is a straight line. However, when you flip the operation, then the function was restricted, even zero yeah. was not included, and we had only the values uh, which were greater than zero, right? right. So, so there are so many combinations. So flipping or uh, different order makes huge difference. Right? Yeah. So composite yeah. function is follow the order, and then order is inside out. We get the right. idea. Right? Yeah, that's, clear. that's a good thing. So continue with your questions and uh, do some exam practice questions also, as you saw. Okay. They could be tricky and they involve many pros, uh, thoughts, right? Together, concepts. Right. So, if you have any difficulty, we can discuss it and then we'll move on to the next unit. Is that okay? Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. So, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do all the exam questions and I think I've got a really good understanding to proceed further. And I, yeah, I think you definitely touched upon everything. So, um, yeah, I'll let you know how I get on. So, yeah, Great. thank you so perfect. much, sir. Have yeah. a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.